Yeah, because because we're not. We we do not consider I ourselves. I protest. Right. The idea that I'm a protest. And I agree with you absolutely. I protest alongside you. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Welcome to the Gospel Centered Pro Life Podcast. In this episode, we're going to talk about some of the differences between protesting and proclaiming the gospel in front of an abortion clinic while sidewalk counseling. Stay with us. I am yours. Send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. I felt your passion, I've touched your heart. Use me, Lord, use me, Lord. Hey there, this is Vicki and Daniel again in our Gospel Centered Pro Life podcast. And as we all know, we're all going through this terrible coronavirus pandemic, really struggling in many ways. We've seen a big uptick in abortions, yeah. sadly, during this sadly, time. Yeah. But there's also been a lot of press lately. There have been a lot of news reports, um, mostly stemming from the arrest of some of the people that were in front of our very abortion yeah. center. Yeah. yeah, I think we've we've made national news. We have made national <laughs> news. And invariably, in these news reports, we are called protesters. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things. No, it's actually the thing we're going to talk about in this yeah, podcast. Yeah, because we're not. We we do not consider I ourselves. I protest right. the idea that I'm a protest. And I agree with you. Absolutely. I protest alongside you. And so we're going to talk about that because I think it it might seem like just a minor point to the yeah. folks listening. And, yeah, big, and, deal. And, big, yeah, deal. big deal. Big you're, deal. You're, you're a protester. Well, you're a we, protester. We know what you are. You know what you are. Who cares what you're called, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Who cares how you identify yourself? But on the you're same <laughs> on those same news reports, look at what they call the so-called pro-choice people. They're advocates for their rep- for reproductive a choice rights. Whatever advocates right yeah which would you rather be i mean the advocate thing you know the bigger words and the more you know the the very positive message very positive positive. protest is a negative they're against they're just against things they don't have any you know solutions Mm -hmm. but an advocate an advocate that's a positive (laughs) (laughs) wonderful title yeah why do we always get slapped with the negative titles? You know what I'm well, saying? I think there's probably a and reason. And so that's that's one of the reasons why we're protesting. That's right. In this podcast, that we're not protesters, actually. That's right. And so that's right. what we're particularly talking about is what we, as Cities for Life, what we do at the abortion clinics, uh, and also what others across the nation are doing in front of the abortion clinics. You know, I identify as a sidewalk counselor. Can't right. I identify as what I <laughs> what I right. feel like I am? I'm not a protester. And the reason right. why this matters is because of the connotations that come with the term protest. Yeah. Right? I mean, you see the bias right there. In the use of those words, I believe not only is the bias evident, but if there wasn't already a bias, well, now there is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> those sidewalk counselors, they're not counselors. In fact, we were often made fun of in being calling ourselves counselors we're we're pro- protesters is, right. yeah. is what the media says anti-choice protesters too that's right it gets <laughs> For some worse folks. that yep exactly yeah so you know guys we're not just complaining here on the podcast no. <laughs> because no. we got a we got a bad rap with the media uh, this matters it does this matters biblically mm-hmm. it matters that and you know, just r- right away we're going to say we're not saying there's anything wrong with protesting right there's protesting sometimes is, a necessary role oh, for absolutely. protesters. Sure. But there is a massive difference mm-hmm. in protesting and what people understand protesting to be yeah. and what we're doing on the sidewalk right. as sidewalk counselors. Right. There's a big difference. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about some of those differences. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it, it always helps to define our terms first. I think it does. So what is a, what is a protester? Well, in my mind, when someone talks about, you know, a protester or, you know, you get a word picture. I don't know Mm -hmm. if you do that. I'm a visual person. I do. When I I hear a word, there's Mm -hmm. this word picture that comes Mm -hmm. to my mind. And when I think of protester or picketer, I think of people. They're out in front of a building, Mm -hmm. probably a government building Mm -hmm. most of the time, Mm -hmm. right? 
and they're walking back and forth with signs Mm -hmm. and they're saying no more whatever right you know in our case no more abortion no more abortion walking back and forth right they're chanting Mm -hmm. um primarily i guess i think of a protester someone that's appealing to a government entity right. or some entity in a position of power. Right. Some trying, authority. Yeah. Some authority. Could be a business. We, we There were many yeah, protest, exactly. p- protesters <clears throat> in the past that, that protest what they feel are unjust business yeah, rules or certainly, laws or certainly, whatever. Yeah. yeah, but mostly I think of, I guess, in a, in a governmental mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say protests aren't bad. I think we can right. protest and we should protest against things that the government is doing that are not good. Yeah. You know, there are folks now who are still in the midst of this corona vi- uh, virus crisis, mm-hmm. and there are people at Capitol buildings and states across the nation, and we're not going to get into whether or not they should be doing that right. or whether they shouldn't, right. but they're protesting the stay-at-home orders and the, the I guess, abuse of power that they perceive their government is mm-hmm. involved in, mm-hmm. and, you know, yeah. We have a constitution in the United States. We have a First Amendment for just that reason. That's right. So, so that's not a bad thing. So there's a grievance being aired or an injustice or something that that they feel is not right that they are challenging. And generally when I picture protesters, I picture a group. I don't usually picture just one or two. It's usually a group and usually circling around, like you said, chanting. Yeah. Picketing uh, in 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 a group gathering, so pro life sidewalk counselors hate abortion. Yeah, we sure. do want abortion to end, but are we protesting as we're standing in front of the abortion center, doing our pro life work? Are we protesting, or are we doing something different? Well, I would think. I would hope, at mm-hmm. least, you know, mm-hmm. of course, from my perspective, we're not protesting right. or proclaiming. But I would hope right. that if someone would come out who's never been out to the sidewalk and they would spend a couple of hours with us, that they would see, well, you're not you're not doing what I, I was thinking you're doing. Right. You're not out here protesting. Right. You're out here offering hope and help to these yeah. women going into the abortion center. Yeah. And that's been the case. You know, we have gotten on social media some folks that would say, you shouldn't be out there protesting. Even, you know, pro-life people, people who would maybe right. politically or whatever align with us yeah. are saying, in this season, you shouldn't be out there protesting. Like, this right. is not the time for that. Yeah. Okay? Well, I'll tell you what. I challenge anybody that would say that. And, mm-hmm. of course, you have the right to protest mm-hmm. this <laughs> my presence out there. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I challenge you to come and spend an hour on the sidewalk with us at the abortion center here right. in Charlotte. Come yeah. and see what we're doing. And see if you think what we're doing would be in the category of protest. Yeah, and I know I know why they're saying that. I mean, look at the movie Unplanned, mm-hmm. which which was you know in many ways I, there was a lot I really liked about that movie. Yeah. But the picture that they showed of the people in front of the abortion center, in front of that Planned Parenthood, there were two groups, and one of those groups I probably would classify as protesters. Yeah. They were angry. They were shaking their fists. They were holding picket signs. Sure. With with angry messages on it and screaming. Uh, chanting as, yeah. as a group and screaming at at the women going in, and that's not what we do. Right, that's not that's what we not do. at all what we do. Now, I will say, and, and you know, we're not trying to get in the weeds of the right and the wrong way to do things. Mm-hmm. And I've certainly experienced people that have come out, and it seems like they're more out there to protest abortion than they are to actually reach the individuals. And that's, I guess, kind of the the difference in my mind, right, right. is that in a protest, you're trying to appeal to a, a government entity, an entity of power. You're trying to uh, you're trying to broadcast your grievances. Right, yeah, yeah. Does that sound? I would agree with yeah. that, yeah. And what we're doing as sidewalk counselors, we're trying to appeal to the individual mothers that are going into the abortion clinic that there is a better way for them, right, that there right. is help available to meet their needs. And there's a God that loves them and that loves their babies. Yeah, and I think that a, a great way to talk about that is to maybe discuss, first of all, what is our model? Okay. What is what is everything that we do based upon biblical? Yeah. And we do have a biblical model, at least for what we do in front of the abortion yeah, center. Yeah, the model of our ministry since the beginning mm-hmm. is Luke chapter 10 in mm-hmm. the parable of the Good Samaritan. Right, right. And if you look at that story... The Good Samaritan is coming along the road 
from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he sees this man who is, the Bible says, left half dead and right. naked in the ditch. Right. And you know what he does? He instantly whips out a picket sign. He does. That says, he walks back that and forth. Thou shall not rob. He uh-huh. walks back and forth. Robbers should be uh-huh. punished and and calls all his friends to start chanting about um, yeah. robbery is no and good. of course he starts a petition and he right. appeals to the right. to the Roman government and to right. the, the Jewish government right. that we should stop the man in the ditch problem right. we should do something about this problem meanwhile he's bleeding to death but we right. <laughs> are going to continue yeah. with this protest now of course guys we're being a little funny here and I'm not again I'm not making fun of we're not making fun of appealing to the government and of course, the desire to end abortion, you know, right. end the man in the ditch problem. Okay, so please don't be offended and think that we're we're marginalizing that. We're not. Yeah. But we are trying to paint a picture of that's not at all what the, the Good Samaritan did. Right. He actually went to the man in the ditch. Mm-hmm. The Bible says he cleaned off his wounds. Yeah. He put the man on his own animal, on his mm-hmm. donkey. Mm-hmm. Took him to an inn, mm-hmm. provided for his needs, gave the innkeeper money, and said. If he needs anything else, so here's enough money to take care of his needs right now, but if he needs anything else, put it on my tab and I'll pay it later. So the model is actually going into the ditch Mm -hmm. and actually doing something with the man in the ditch. And in our case, we see that there are two people in the ditch. There's the mom and the baby. Yeah. And we want to go into that ditch, i.e. the abortion center, Mm -hmm. and we want to try by using our voices and the other means that God has given us, we literally can't barge in the doors and go into the ditch and drag them out, but by using our voices and the other means God has given us Mm -hmm. to get that mom and that baby out of the ditch. And then the stuff that she's there for, because we understand, even the most prideful woman that goes into that abortion clinic, you know, we had our podcast with Ebony, who was very candid and very open about Mm -hmm. just the selfishness. I mean, she used those words, I was selfish, it was about me. That she went to New York to have that late term abortion. Right. But even in that, she still had things that were going on. She still had wounds mm-hmm. that she was dealing with. Mm-hmm. And those wounds need to be tended to. Mm-hmm. And by God's grace, they were. Yep. And that's what we're doing at the abortion clinics. We're mm-hmm. trying to tend to those wounds. We're trying to show those moms that are in that ditch that there is healing for their wounds. Yeah. And of course, for their baby, there's life. Mm-hmm. And their baby has value, and so we're appealing to them. So, they, yeah, that's the model of our ministry. And right. beyond that, with the different connections that we talk uh, about, oftentimes we try to plug them into the end. Mm-hmm. You know, take them to mm-hmm. the innkeeper and provide for their needs, whether that means getting um, housing for them, whether that means getting clothing, baby shower items for them, whatever it means. We want to try to meet those needs. Right. Put them on our own animal. Right. <laughs> Sometimes that means putting them in your own car yeah. and taking them back home or yeah. taking them to to a maternity home or something like right. that. We've, we've had right. those situations. At some point, Vicki, mm-hmm. we need for you to share your story about a young lady that ultimately you were chased by the police because, right. yeah. <laughs> because you got her away from the abortion center and she was being right. pressured by a family member to have the abortion. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a fun story. Guys. That is a we'll fun story. We'll share that at some point. It's a good one. But that's that, you know, that's like the good Samaritan <laughs> riding, running, running, running. <laughs> My on donkey his, was going as fast your, as it your could. Your donkey was going fast. Just, <laughs> yeah, God worked it out, guys. Yeah. Vicki didn't end up in jail. She's and, good. She's, and, the baby's alive and well. Oh man. She's awesome story. Good. But it let's is, not, is. let's not, uh, we won't get rabbit trail on that. Right. Right. But you know, Again, that's the picture. Luke chapter 10, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan is what we're doing. And again, right. you see in the Good Samaritan parable, he's not protesting. Yeah, He's intervening. The uh, good, good word. Yeah. That's the difference. I think that's a really great word. Protest versus I intervention. I use the best words. That is that. a good one. <laughs> and, and now Jesus is the one that tells the story of, of the Good Samaritan. Yes, he does. But Jesus himself... <clears throat> Examining, we're to be like Jesus, right? We're, yeah, by and His grace, we we will be. We will be <laughs> one day, and and so it. I think it is always so helpful to examine. Well, what did Jesus do? Yeah, was Jesus a protester or was he an interventionist? How's that? Is that a good word? Yeah, interventionist. I like it. Yeah. So there's there's so many places that we we can look for the answer. To that yeah, but, absolutely. But what would you say is did, did Jesus protest? Well, I mean, I would say Jesus in one sense. If you look at his dealings with the Pharisees, he certainly mm-hmm. protested their hypocrisy. He did, yeah. And he certainly pointed out to the people. He even mm-hmm. told his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, right. which is his hypocrisy. Right, yeah. You know, 
putting up this body of beliefs and these hoops you got to jump through li- religiously, but not even keep into those 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 requirements yourself. It was hypocrisy. Yeah. yeah. So I think in one sense, certainly Jesus protested. He certainly uh, protested sin. Absolutely. Just in general. He, yeah, he, he, he did. Well, he hated sin, uh-huh. no doubt. Absolutely. Uh, sin yeah. is what separates us from God. But was he marked by no, protesting I, I don't sin? think so at all. Mm-hmm. I, I think the mark of Jesus' ministry, you know, when we look at the Gospels, mm-hmm. and we also look at the writings of the apostles, mm-hmm. of Paul and Peter, John, we see Christ mm-hmm. as an interventionist. Yeah. <laughs> he intervened. You know, the Bible says that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. Paul says this, and he says, of who I am the chief. He's the chief of yeah. sinners. Jesus Christ yeah. came to save sinners. Mm-hmm. He came to intervene. Mm-hmm. He came to go into the hedges and the highways and compel them to come in. And so mm-hmm. it wasn't just it wasn't just broadcasting grievances. Certainly Jesus did that with the Pharisees mainly. Right. Yeah. He protested sin. Like even mm-hmm. with the woman caught in adultery, there's one point, you know, people think Jesus was just nice and warm and kind. He he was very gracious to that woman, but he did mm-hmm. say, Go and sin no more. So right. in one sense that was right. a, a protest of her lifestyle. Yeah. But he intervened in that situation. Yeah. So I think as as well, no, as sidewalk counselors, the the main mark of of our our movement out there on the sidewalk and what we do out there on the sidewalk should be one of intervention. We're mm-hmm. intervening. We're intervening primarily on behalf of that baby mm-hmm. to not protest, but to plead even with the mother. Right. To appeal to her. Right. To intervene and to save that baby. Right. And the intervention... And also to get her out of the ditch, too. Exactly. And the intervention may involve, in fact, it has to involve, the naming of the issue that is causing the wound. And so in a sense, that really is, well, there is a grievous sin. There's the sins that brought you here, but there's the sin you're contemplating of of Mm -hmm. destroying your baby. And and that does need to be addressed. It needs to be named. But there are solutions. In in true intervention, you don't just name a problem, but you have a solution to your problem. So one of those stories that I thought of, and it's maybe not the best illustration, but I think it does illustrate the point, is the a woman at the well. Right. When, when John Jesus, chapter 4. Right. Yeah. Right. When when Jesus confronts the the woman at the well and so he he doesn't stand there again with a picket sign that mm-hmm. says adultery is bad and, yeah. <laughs> and and line up his disciples with signs so, you yeah. know so that they, they march around the wells. It does <laughs> seem if you look at you know protests what mm-hmm. I think anybody would identify I'd agree that's a protest. Right. You see a lot of times uh, little pithy statements and right. stuff like that. You wrote one <laughs> in, in the right? context of this story that made <laughs> right. me laugh. It's right, like the right. disciples didn't have on, didn't have a T-shirt on, or didn't have a sign that said this. What's what's the statement you get? If here? you cheatin', you will be beaten. And if you, know, you march- cheatin', you you will be beaten. <laughs> Marching so, around the well and, yeah. and in in this massive protest against. And I mean, the woman had had seven husbands. Well, five. Five. Okay. Jesus doesn't shy away from pointing this out. He does not. But he doesn't rest there. It's, no. it's one line. I think he's got one line where he mentions, yeah. you know, she's clearly in sin. He's mm-hmm. he's making note of it. You are in sin. Yeah. And she's coming there for what she perceives as her need. Yeah. Her need is water. She's thirsty. Right, yeah. She needs to draw water from the well. But Jesus doesn't let her stay in water a place of what she thinks she needs to do, he intervenes and brings her to the point of recognizing there is a much more important need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he actually, you know, if you read through that mm-hmm. story, he's taken this natural need, which is water, mm-hmm. and he's showing her that really her need is living water, spiritual water. Right, right. And, you know, he goes right from talking about the water, mm-hmm. talking about her spiritual thirst that needs to be quenched. And only he, you know, he says, if you knew who it was that speaks to you, you would ask him for living water and he would give you the water that you drink of and you will never thirst again. And she's clueless. She's saying, she's well, like, get me some of yeah, that. I, 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 get I that. don't want to have to draw have to water come, from yeah, the well yeah. anymore. But if you see what he's doing there, mm-hmm. is he's really painting a picture of her spiritual need. Right. He's showing her, you've been trying to satisfy your thirst with men. Right. 
and with sexual relationships yeah. that dishonor the Lord and yeah. dishonor what you're called to be before the Lord. Yeah. But the water that I give you, the spiritual water, what you really need to quench your thirst is me. Right. Yeah. So he's not protesting. Yeah. He's proclaiming certain truths and he's intervening in her life in such a way where she's impacted mm-hmm. and she doesn't just stay there at the well. As a matter of fact, she takes off back to the city in Samaria yeah. and begins to proclaim this Christ throughout the town. This, could this be the Messiah? Yeah. yeah. And I think you said in this little write up, which we'll yeah. put out on the Sidewalks for Life right. site, which is comparing and contrasting protest against sidewalk counseling. Mm-hmm which I think is really good. And you talk about she's one of the first evangelists right. in the New Testament. Yeah, exactly. One of the first, maybe the first woman evangelist. And I love what you said because the way you painted that picture of what's happening at the well, it, it's very easy to make the connection about what we're doing in front of the abortion center. Yeah. The women come expressing their need is get rid of that baby. Yeah. Get rid of that baby yeah. and and life will be okay again. And our role as an interventionist is first to, to say, well, really, that's not what your need is, and it's, it's actually a, a sin, what, yeah. what, you're, what you're contemplating yeah, doing. Yeah, what you're contemplating doing is not a solution. That's right. It's actually part of the problem. And it's, it's what led them to this place, this terrible place, is, is all of this other sin in the background that, that will just continue. And so the intervention is that, that need for Christ. Yeah. For, and, and any gospel-focused sidewalk counseling group wants to point these women to truly the only answer to abortion, which is to come to a saving understanding of what it means to truly submit your life to Jesus Christ. Yeah, so I think in one sense, when we're looking at protests, a protest is defined in the appeal that's given to to an entity. You know, Mm -hmm. you're appealing to an entity Mm -hmm. to to listen to your grievances or whatever. Right, right. And with what we're doing in proclamation and, and intervention and sidewalk mm-hmm. counseling yeah. is, yeah, we're appealing to an entity, but it's to an individual. And we're mm-hmm. appealing to her heart. She, you know, she doesn't have the power. A woman going into an abortion clinic does not have the power to end abortion nationally. Right. right? She right. can't make abortion go away. And right. we're not appealing to her to do that. Right. But what she can do is she can obey God. And that one abortion that she's about to be a part of, mm-hmm. well, she has the power to choose to to stop that. Right. Like so we're appealing saved. to an individual, mm-hmm. and we're trying to show her the, the direction she's going is one of destruction. So we're not just appealing to her for her baby. We're appealing to her for her sake as well. That's right. You know? And earlier you said, we're not really trying to slam all protesters. And honestly, right. as I was thinking, and, and I agree, I think that there is a place for, for protest. And as I was thinking, well, is there a biblical example of protest? And you mentioned the, what Jesus says to the Pharisees, sure. and I think that would, that would apply. But I was thinking of the book of Esther, mm-hmm. and there's really two protests, in my opinion, right. that, that take place in their, that book. And I won't go through the whole story of Esther. It's a fantastic book. Everyone should read it. Yeah. But the first protest, I think, occurs with Queen Vashti. Yeah. Queen okay. Vashti is married to King Ahasuerus, I believe. Sure. And, that's, yeah, that's how that's I would it. say it. <laughs> and, and Queen Vashti is apparently very beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, and the king is having an orgy, a drunken orgy, with all of his buddies okay. and and calls for Queen Vashti to come. And there's some indication that he wants her to come in only her veil. Okay. In other words, nothing else. Yeah. Wearing nothing else for basically a lewd display. And Queen Vashti protests. Yeah, she does. Just well you know in the version that, that I know, uh-huh. I know the VeggieTales version. Okay. The VeggieTales <laughs> version is that he asked her to come and make her make him a sandwich. <laughs> and she she protests. So maybe just f- for kids' sake, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll go with that version. She's, but, she's but protesting she against making She refuses. Right. She she protests what is clearly an unjust, or mm-hmm. in my opinion, an unjust request by, by the king. And she appeals to the authority, who is the king. Uh-huh. No, I yeah. protest. Yeah, I'm protests. not going 
to make you a sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) And and it was a successful protest. She, as far as I know, she was not killed, which surprises me. But the, the king recognizes it as a protest, as do all of his court officials who say, oh, this cannot stand. We can't allow this kind of protest or all husbands are going to be in danger of their wives not making them <laughs> not making them sandwiches. And that would be terrible. Right. So it sets the stage for then Esther, uh-huh. who's the heroine of the book, book of Esther. And Esther, through a series of events that I won't go into, replaces Queen Vashti. She becomes uh-huh. queen. And a, a plot is uncovered by her uncle Mordecai that... The evil a man who hates the Jews, Haman, is, is, has, has worked out this plot with the king to have the Jewish people exterminated on a certain day. And the king has set the seal that says, yeah, you can do this. Yeah. He doesn't know that Esther is Jewish. And Esther has kept that secret. But Mordecai says, Esther, you got to go to the king. You got you to tell him what's about to happen to your people. Admit that, yeah. that you're Jewish and that your people are going to be exterminated through this evil plot. So basically, you, you're going to have to get before the king, right. the government entity, right. and protest this decision. Right. And her, her going before the entity was at grave personal danger because yeah. in, by the law of that time, she could not go before the king without being called. And she tells Mordecai that, and and then ultimately she decides she will go. She will make this protest. And he he allows her to make the protest. And she does. She she doesn't set out out a solution. She doesn't have the solution. She is protesting an unjust action before the one who is in authority. And ultimately, he he provides a solution, and her people are saved. So yeah. again, the that protest was successful and saved the lives of yeah the Jews. Right. Yeah. So so in that, mm-hmm. you know, there was there was certainly intervention. Yeah. Right. This this government entity, but not by became, her. Not by the, her. The intervention was not by her. Right. Yeah. It so was that's by why the authority. You know, again, we're not discounting protests right. and the need for us to protest certain things that the government does or doesn't do. We need right. to do that, and things can change. Protests can change things. They have throughout the history of this country, throughout the history of the world, and and so they're good. Right. But that's just not what we're doing on the sidewalk. Right. Right. <laughs> and you know, it even has m- more special relevance right now. During this coronavirus. Yeah, I think so. Because I don't believe that protesters are specifically exempt. I think people could argue that. But ministries providing intervention are exempt. In the stay-at-home order, you mean? In the stay-at-home orders with this coronavirus. And I think, therefore, the use of the word protester in, face it, what are mostly liberal media publications Mm -hmm. is i think it's purposeful protesters aren't exempt however though Mm -hmm. actually Mm -hmm. it seems that protests are exempt because that's right in line with the first amendment right and there have been actually our governor here the the legal counsel to our governor has recently written a letter in response to some other legislators who were given some grievances about the uh police department in Raleigh saying basically that protests aren't essential and the governor through his attorney is responding saying, well, you're right. Uh, protests can go on. Yep. There just needs to be social. Dis- so you, actually now they're recognizing because of the first amendment that protests are valid activities. The first amendment and the constitution don't just go out the door because there's a stay at home order. Yeah. And thankfully that's, again, I think why some of these protests are important so that people are, are pushing back against government overreach and all that. But, again, it's not really relevant to what we're doing because right. we're intervening. We're, we're doing all the, the things that within the exceptions and all of that mm-hmm. as far as offering tangible resources and support, right. real counseling services, mm-hmm. real resources to meet practical needs and all that stuff. We're, we're doing that. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Not that protests are bad. Yeah. It's just, again, it's not what we're doing on the sidewalk as sidewalk counselors. Right, yeah. And ultimately, you know, kind of summarizing a lot of these thoughts, 
Jesus did not come to condemn the world, right. but to save the world. And and I think, and I could be wrong in this, but but my sense of protesting is that there's something we're condemning. Yeah. In in some manner, we are yeah. condemning it as wrong, and and needs to be changed. Yeah. But Jesus' perspective was definitely intervention, salvation, save. Yeah. The world. Absolutely. That's why he came. Yeah, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 comes to mind. Mm-hmm. God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. So you have that word demonstration, right? Yeah, we think did. about a protest yeah. as a demonstration. Yeah. That's not what it's talking but about. But he in that demonstrates passage. his it's love. It's talking about an actual demonstration, an actual not just outward display, but intervention, mm-hmm. where that God intervened to a lost and dying world. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ came and he died. He laid his life down. Yeah. And, you know, that message, the message of the gospel, has got to be for us who are out there on the sidewalk and doing ministry, those who are in pregnancy centers. I want to encourage those who are in pregnancy centers yeah. who are doing the difficult ministry and staying open through this coronavirus thing and, and jumping through all the hoops and the guidelines and all of that stuff. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep also bring in the gospel because it's the only message that can really change a heart. When we're appealing to a mother, yeah. the gospel is the only message that's really going to change her heart. You might appeal to her and she might choose life for you know a few days and then she could go back to the abortion clinic. Yeah. Or she might choose life for that baby, get caught on another situation and go back to the abortion that's clinic right. with the next child she's that's pregnant right. with. Yep. So that's why we're not just protesting to her. We're not just protesting to the government. We're proclaiming the gospel mm-hmm. that will change her heart. And the gospel mm-hmm. will change society as yeah. it takes root in these government uh, um, people in positions of power, these, these uh, presidents and, mm-hmm. and judges and legislators mm-hmm. and all that. Once the gospel takes root in a society, things change. Yeah. So all of this is, all these things sort of work together. You know, the protesting, yeah. Appealing to government entities, yeah, okay. Proclaiming individual intervention and those things work together ultimately to bring glory to Jesus and to save lives. Right. So we just wanted to have this podcast and to share some of the differences that we see and really to say, hey, protesting, do it, whatever. But proclaiming the truth on the sidewalk and and being there as sidewalk counselors, that's what we're doing. That's That's what we're going to keep doing by, by the grace of God. Amen. Yeah. So, guys, we do want to encourage you. We're going to, um, in the coming days, put this article out, help you guys understand some of the differences between protesting and uh, and being out there on the sidewalk as a sidewalk counselor to help encourage you, to help you may, maybe answer some other people's questions who are wondering why you're going out there. Um, so we're going to put this out on our Sidewalks for Life site, sidewalks4life.com. So we encourage you to go there. We also encourage you to share our podcast, go back and listen to some of the other episodes that we put out there share on social media what you know what we're doing here on this podcast and uh, reach out to us dparks at citiesforlife.com is my email address vcassiorg at citiesforlife.com is hers we'd love to hear from you we'd love to hear some suggestions about other podcast episodes that we can do but until next time god bless give me an outlet for love give me gratitude I know it will cost me my life but nothing's too precious since I met you